Episode 5. Something is wrong. Zanea's eyes widened as she looked at the mobile screen. This guy is unreal. I think it is a prank. It is a prank. For sure. It must be photoshopped. I mean, just look at this guy. Lily blushed. I know. Does he not resemble one of the Hollywood actors? Unreal. Zanea cleared her throat. <clears throat> now I am more confident this is a prank. He can't be real. Lily looked at her with a raised eyebrow. I have met him. Zanea grew curious. Is he exactly like this picture? Much better. Zanea had a naughty smirk on her face. Lily gently slapped her shoulder. What are you blushing for? He wants to spend the night with me. The best friend nodded. I might not stop you now. Lily laughed. She pulled the card out from her pocket. Before she could show it to Zanea, she snatched it from her. Is this the card he gave you? Lily nodded. Wow, this is not a business card. It looks customized. Really? Zanea's expression changed to a serious frown. But why would he customize one for you? How does he know you? Lily kept mum and listened to her. She made sense. Zanea continued. I just don't know. It seems he has a motive. Lily took the card from her. You were just overthinking now. Zanea was quiet. She was lost in her deep thoughts. Lily rolled her wheelchair towards the door. Come, let's have a walk. Zanea quietly followed her. Something is not right. She thought to herself. Something is terribly off. I need to look into it myself and give Lily a heads up. She looked at Lily, who looked so adamant about Marcus. Blake limped his way back to the palace with Marcus's arm around his shoulder. The older brother was walking briskly. Since Blake had twisted his leg in between, he kept limping. Slower, brother. Sweat dripped from Marcus's forehead. We should get back home before sunrise. But why? Blake became more inquisitive. At first, Marcus was quiet for a few seconds. Then he chuckled. My needs can't wait, you know. Blake rolled his eyes and kept Marcus's pace. He knew something was wrong. Marcus was hiding something. Finally, they got back home. The gigantic gate opened for the two brothers. The marbles shone brightly. They climbed the stairs towards their rooms. Marcus patted Blake's shoulder. You should sleep, little bro. But Blake stood in the hall, staring at Marcus. He flung his nightgown and tightly held the hand of a woman standing at his door. Blake wanted to stop him, but it was too late. The door closed behind them. Blake exhaled deeply and went to his room. He was still an insomniac. He stood at the gigantic window that showed the beautiful view of the green forest. He could see the orange streak from far afar. Blake looked at his watch. It was almost time for sunrise. He replayed the words of his brother in his mind. We should get back home before sunrise. Something is not right. Blake could feel it. He massaged his forehead and turned back. Ugh, I must be overthinking. Just then, he heard a loud groan from afar. It was the voice of a human, and not any creature in the forest. Somebody is in huge trouble, Blake thought, and ran to see who it was. At the stairs, he met his father, the king of the forest. His huge hand rested on Blake's chest that was pounding heavily. Where are you going? There is a human in the forest. He is hurt. I heard the moan. We must do something, father. But the king seemed unmoved. Blake jabbered again. Dad! The father exhaled calmly. You should rest. You must be hearing stuff. I did not hear a thing. Come, let me usher you to your room. But, but... Blake kept protesting in vain. Dad, I heard it clearly. It was the voice of a human. He must be lost. As a king, you must look into it, don't you think? After all, we took an oath that we will not hurt any human. The king chuckled. When nobody is hurt, why bother? Somebody is hurt! I heard that! They finally reached Blake's room. 
Son, you must rest. He closed the door. Blake was panting heavily. But I heard a voice, he murmured and strode to the window again. His eyes kept searching for the human, but he could see nothing. How is this possible? Blake could not understand the mysterious happening. Lily got up from the wheelchair. Her left foot was numb with all the medicine, so she did not feel any pain. Zanea extended her phone. It is your dad calling. Daddy! She cried with happy tears. The father could not say anything. How are you feeling now? Mr. James opened his mouth to respond, but it was too difficult to let the words out of his lips. Lily consoled him. It is okay. Do not stress yourself. But he asked in a broken tone. What will I do, even after I am out? Lily smiled. Shh. We'll figure something out. The father kept mum. After a long pause, he asked. Where are you? I thought you would come to meet me. Lily's eyes widened. Lily sweated. She was mum. She did not know what to respond. She looked at Zanea. The father asked, Where did the money for the bail come from? <laughs>